So today, let's do another installment of what you think you're saying versus what your body is actually saying to your horse. And specifically today, let's talk about hips and how our hips and our dysfunctional hips, more importantly, crooked, stiff, not working the way that they should affect our horses. So I got to thinking about this because I saw this post about Steven Peters, who's a dressage rider, teaching a clinic, and he was saying, you know, they were saying in the blurb for this um, video that he was teaching riders to hold their horses to a higher level of expectation when it came to how the horses reacted to the aids. So obviously we all want our horses to be reactive. We all want that like super duper communication with our horses. But I think it's really important to understand that, that when we have a teacher or a clinician or a book or whatever it is, a video, and they're teaching us the aids and how to apply the aids, they assume that our bodies are like this, okay? Gravity neutral, all the joints of the spine work well, there's e even balance on both seat bones, okay? Now, it doesn't matter what discipline we ride, what level we ride, it does not matter whether you are a person who loves to spend three hours on your horse trail riding through the woods, trail riding over the mountains, or if you are a jumper, or a barrel racer, it does not matter what discipline you ride. Horses always react to what we are saying and all teachers, clinicians, books, always assume that we already have this like perfect body, okay? So if a tr teacher says to you, put, put your right leg on, you put your right leg on, there's a certain thing that you expect your horse to hear when you're saying, and you're training your horse to become more and more sensitive to hearing what you are saying. So the problem that we run into um, when we have stiffness, crookedness, pain, and let's face it, those all live on a continuum. Those are all part of the same problem. They all mean that there is a snag, there is a system error in this perfect body because the human body when it's in good alignment with gravity and all the joints work properly, it's actually like super duper, I think, perfect for horseback riding because we have this wonderful S-shaped curve of the spine and this ability to absorb motion and that's perfect for absorbing motion on the horse. We have these incredibly flexible hips. We have, um, you know, more. most importantly, we have this brain that tells us to stay upright. Like we're really we're set for riding, okay? But then what happens, of course, is that we assume this is where we're at. The riding instructor assumes this is where we're at. If you're reading a book, they assume this is where you're at. And so if the, the book says to you, do X, Y, and Z, this is the outcome you should be looking for. This is what you are telling your horse when you give this aid. That is true and when we have a body that's somehow crooked, there's no way that that message comes through. But more importantly, there's no way that that message comes through clearly, which means that it doesn't also come with other messages, which totally confuses horses. Okay, and we know what happens when we give conflicting information to our horses. One of three things, right? Either they just put up with us and shut us out and we think they're lazy. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, a lot of times it's where learned helplessness happens in horses or secondly, they get really spooky because they're like, well, I'm trying to do what you're telling me to do and you're telling me three different things and you know, it makes them insecure and more spooky, more vigilant and or they end up saying, okay, I, I've had enough of you and I'm gonna have you know, behavior issues, which can range from you know, head shaking to putting the tongue above the bed and you know, pushing against the leg, you know, kicking when you give an aid um, to you know, actually <laughs> bucking and wanting you off, okay? So today I thought we would talk about hips because hips are super duper interesting because when we have uh, any kind of stiffness or crookedness or pain in the hip area, 
I think that is one of the most profound like misalignments that we can, can have when it comes to horseback riding. And I say that really thinking that all misalignments, of course, have a super negative effect on horses. But if, because we sit on the hip and the hip is involved in all of our aids, it's kind of a biggie, right? So the thing that we have to understand about the hip is that, um, and, and sorry, I should first go back to why is this, okay? Why is it that we think we're here, right? It's because our brain always tells us that we're at neutral because the the biggest job it has really is to carry this brain upright against gravity, right? All our systems, everything, our development, our musculoskeletal development, everything that happens to us as we learn to be upright walking humans is to keep this brain upright against gravity, okay? So the body will do that and it's what's called a yes brain, meaning it does whatever you ask it to do and it also assumes that you're normal, neutral, good, okay? Um, so even when we have misalignments or you know range of motion issues, crookedness, let's face it, most of us do, um, the brain tells us that's not so because we get along just fine in daily life, we think, because we just can easily cut things out or we can alter things and, you know, make some concessions. But when we get on our horse, all that kind of goes by the wayside, right? So um, I'm assuming everybody's goal is to <laughs> have a super fun, a relationship with their horse and how do you have a relationship with someone that you can't communicate with? Hard, okay? Um, right, so there's either, just so that we're all on the same page here, I'm assuming, and again, we should never make assumptions, but I'm assuming that you are in his group because you want a good relationship with your horse, which means you have to be able to communicate clearly, and or then um, you may be in here because you want to be able to perform with your horse, which I think usually goes back to having a relationship, okay? so perform, that means, you know, whatever it is that you want to be able to do with horse. Okay, so let's look at hips, okay? So first we have to understand that there are really three kind of um, dimensions in a way that the hip can be off, okay? So our hip can be, so let's just use this perfect person over here, or let's let's draw it on, on a different one. So let's say this is our gravity line, and this is your head. And now here are your shoulders, whoops, and the hips. Okay, I think the easiest one to maybe figure out whether you have it or not, obviously is, is one hip higher than the other, okay? And um, I can tell you at the end how to test for all of these. That's not really super hard to test for, obviously, but let's say one hip is higher than the other, okay? So if one hip is higher than the other, when you are standing on the ground, one hip will be higher than the other when you are on your horse. Now, the tricky thing is, now we get on the horse, so it doesn't always look like that, okay? But what we also have to remember that soft tissue connects everything in a certain pattern and shape, okay? So <laughs> before I came on to do this, I, I, I was gonna change my shirts and I put on this shirt that um, I got a TJ Maxx and it has like one arm wasn't put on right and so it has like a one arm that's way over here. Well, it, it throws off the whole shape. It doesn't matter how much I pull and it, it it's just off, okay? So when our hip is off, let's say the hip is off when we're standing on the ground, then it will also be off when we get on the horse. However, because we're sitting on two seat bones, it may look like our hip is square when we're on the horse, but now the upper body will then compensate for that, okay? So um, a lot of times, even if we have a hip crookedness like that, we don't always notice that on our horses. What we notice is that the upper body maybe then is off to the side. So let's pretend this person on the ground maybe has, um, one hip higher than the other like this, right, for whatever reason. And 
and the upper body is used to kind of making up for that. So it has kind of a curvature and it tries to keep the head in the center. Okay, so now your body from the outside to other people looks fine most of the time, um, but to you it's not. So now you get on your horse and then now you'd have the same curvature here and then that shows up differently. Okay, so when if you're going back to, like I always say, you have to kind of be like Sherlock Holmes, right? Do that exercise where you really think about, okay, what does my horse always do? So let's say this person, obviously the moment they get on, there's going to be more weight on this side, which means if you get on your horse and always the horse wants to drift to one side, you know, usually when they walk around in the pasture, they don't walk around like drifting and like they know how to walk a straight line um, most of the times and if they don't we're supposed to help them <laughs> with it not hinder them okay but um so this person would have a tendency like the horse would tend to maybe always drift okay and what we then think okay we might think then oh my horse always pushes against my left leg I always have to use my left leg so much for example if this was your left side the other thing that could happen here is that the upper body is crooked and the brain goes, oh, that doesn't feel good. So the brain would give a signal to this leg and this hip to kind of clamp on. Okay, so that leg would clamp on the horse in order not to fall the other way. Makes sense. It's a balance thing, right? Again, we're all subject to gravity that doesn't go away when we get on our horses. So this brain may say to this, oh, really like, so then it may be that you feel like you're having a hard time really applying the leg aids on this side because this leg is already like, oh, it needs to be there to hold on. It cannot relax enough to let things happen, okay? So those are just two of the things. There are obviously a myriad of things that can happen if your hip is one side higher than the other, okay? So that's the first dimension that you could be crooked in the hip. The other dimension that we could be crooked in the hip is if we have a rotation, okay? So um, that means one hip is in front of the other. So that means either you have a rotation in the hip, usually that includes a rotation of the spine. Now the tricky thing about humans, of course, is that we compensate. So you could have a hip forward rotation on one side and then counterbalance with the upper body, right, which now isn't good because now your spine is locked. So we're going to look at both scenarios. So um, let's pretend this is from the top, okay? So this is the top of your head, and this is your horse. Like this, here's the head, here's the tail. And let's pretend, whoops, um, so the horse now is here, okay? And we get on and we think that our hips are square because the yes brain makes us think that. And then we get in the saddle and you know, usually the saddle, if we can uh, work our way into there, then it will kind of keep us straight. The problem is that if, again, if you look from the top, so if the hip is usually crooked, then maybe the upper body on top of it will also be and or it could rotate right so from the top you could have a hip that goes this way and the shoulders that go that way now if you remember that you know the spine of course connects these two then you have rotations all over the place which means now you can't make the movement go through so usually if you have a rotation of the hip like that, where the hip has a tendency to be forward more on the other side, you will know that because your horse always has an easier time turning left than right, which is you have an easier time turning left than right, okay? Um, this a lot of times shows up if you do disciplines that need a lot of quick turning, right? Like barrel racing or, you know, cow penning, things that where the horse has to be really agile and you have to be able to move, okay, um, that usually shows up if you're doing, um, you know, let's say you're jumping, then your horse will have a tendency to always come down on one lead in front of the other, um, have a harder time with certain lines. Um, if you're doing dressage or some type of English riding, Western dressage, equitation type of thing, 
then your horse will feel like oh he he or she turns more easily in one direction the canter is usually more easy one direction the other half passes things like that the other thing though like i said just now that can happen is that now you're kind of straightening here but you have one rotation in your hip and one rotation in your upper body now pretty much your horse is screwed okay because when you think you're telling the horse to go straight you're really telling the horse with your hips to go one way or the other okay or even worse now you're telling your horse to go one way with your hips and another way with your upper body and it's not clean meaning you're giving all these confusing aids besides the fact that now your spine has a twist in it so you can't really absorb motion very well does that make sense so um, let's say you take a lesson and again, if you go back to the first example that we had, which was, you know, whoops, oh, it right. one hip higher, okay? One hip is higher all the time, and you, now you're crooked. Your instructor is telling you to go straight, but you're already telling your horse to not go straight when you think you are, so then you have to counterbalance that, right? So it becomes totally confusing because you can't really apply the aids properly if already your weight aids and probably your leg aids are saying something different okay and then we could have the rotation um, scenario and again you think you're going straight you think you know your instructor says okay go straight you think your hips are pointing straight you think your shoulders are pointing straight and even worse now let's say your body is pointing this direction and your instructor says take a you know make a circle to the right and you think you're making a circle to the right but your shoulders are your horse is totally confused already okay so you're not saying what you think you're saying because of that the other one that we can have which is a little bit more tricky is of course that we can have different uh, orientations of the hip okay so if we look from the side like this then we have to have a neutral pelvis right so when we sit on our horses we want this to be neutral so that we can use it, okay? Horses' palaces are fused, ours are not. So you can have, let's say, for whatever reason, you could have an anterior tilt. Now, you can have that on both sides, but you can also have that just on one side or the other, okay? Or you could have a posterior tilt of the pelvis. So the pelvis can be crooked that way. The worst case scenario here is really if you have a disparity, meaning one hip is going one way and the other hip is going another way. Because now you are never comfortable sitting on one seat bone. So your, your brain is always going to choose one. So let's say you're sitting on one seat bone, well then you may be leaning back too much. But if you sit on the other seat bone, then maybe you're leaning forward too much. And or, right, so hip disparity is usually kind of, I think, Maybe the worst of these, again, there's no <coughs> hierarchy that's like saying I have a little pain or I have a lot of pain. It's all pain, right? Um, so that this isn't great because now cantering is usually a challenge, okay? This, again, tends to um, not make you feel safe in the saddle because you're not. You don't have a stable platform to sit on. You are having to compensate in the upper body to make up for this. The, this is very strenuous for all the muscles in your back because they have to kind of try to even this out all the time. It's usually you know, not comfortable sitting. A, because you can't really do the sitting trot here because which seat bone would you sit on? Um, so that gets uncomfortable. So usually not a good hip problem to have for sitting the trot or you know getting your horse to go through you really can never because you are always telling your horse that you're not sure what you're doing and this one isn't just about what you think you're saying and you're not saying this one is about this is super uncomfortable for your horse of course because with this always also comes um, you know your upper body having to compensate for that okay so let's look at 
So there's some easy ways that you can look at your hip yourself to figure out what you have. Um, it's always a little tricky because the brain kind of tries to protect you from, you know, really finding out. But um, you can, you know, do an easy test or you stand in front of the mirror. And let's say this is your mirror and you can take a little piece of tape, you know, like the blue tape that you used to paint with, for example, and you just put your feet on either side, make sure they're an even distance, and then you look up. And then you'll see, oh, okay, well maybe my head is too far on this side, or you'll see right away, is one hip higher than the other, okay? So that's an easy one to see, do I have uneven hips? And you can put little stickers on your hip bones, for example. It's a usually a good, good way to look. Um, always look from the front, and then maybe have someone take a picture from you from the back, that way you can see. Um, the, the hip rotation, you can usually see if you, um, you know, just stand up straight, kind of close your eyes for a second, and then march in place, march as high as you can, really pick your feet up, and then all of a sudden, stop. And you will find, if you don't have a hip rotation, that the feet always end up even, because the, the feet always want to go underneath the hip, okay? If you have a hip rotation, then usually one foot will be in front of the other. And then you know, okay, I have a hip rotation. Um, the, um, the disparity, that's a little bit more difficult to see. Um, so, you know, get, get help with having that looked at even. Um, but then here, of course, comes the question that everyone asks me. I'm sure that you're thinking right now, well, how do I fix that? Well, carefully <laughs> and over time. Because, again, because the brain is a yes brain. So, yes, you have, have to first identify that there's a problem. Now, um, if you're, you know, if you're feeling stiff, if you have aches and pains and stuff like that, or, you know, you may have gone to a clinic and you've been told you're crooked, then you know you're crooked. Um, but, yes, of course, identifying it is the first step, but... It's a sure bet if you're in this group there's that you got one of these issues or you know some other alignment issue but uh, anyhow you got to identify exactly what it is right but then the problem is that we don't like wake up one day we, we're not like in perfect alignment and functional and then we wake up one day and we're not okay that never ever happens unless you're like in a severe accident or whatever okay so these things happen over time which means by now you have an accumulation of compensations that you also have to address. So yes, it's always super powerful, I think, to understand the root cause, because the reason why so many times we end up treating the same thing over and over and over and over and over again is because we don't really figure out the root cause of this problem, okay? So hip, when you have hip misalignments, that can have a lot of different reasons, right? It could be something going on with your feet, your knees, um, you know, how you even, it can come from higher up. So you have to be a little cautious in thinking that what you can see, like let's say you go home and you do this thing or you get up right now and you look in the mirror and you see that one hip isn't higher than the other. Well, well, that could be a lot of things, okay? That could be your upper body is too far over there and so your hips are shifting in order to help out, okay? So you have to make sure um, to always dig a little deeper. Okay, so like when I work with writers, it's, you know, what we always do in the very beginning. You have to figure out what's what, what is causing what, what is dynamically pulling on other things. What movement patterns have we created both in our soft tissue and in our brain? Okay, what, what is the brain, what messages is the brain not clearly sending that it should be sending? Okay, so it's part of that whole process. And then, you know, once you've done that, then you can go about, you know, gently retraining, right? So first you have to kind of reset a lot of these movement patterns. And, um, you know, it sounds more difficult than it is. It's, it's tricky because you have to know, um, you know, which one, where to go. But it's, again, it's kind of built into our brain and our way of moving, right? So, um, once you've done that, then, you know, you can kind of retrain all these movement patterns. But um, 
it's a process, right? The most important thing to remember is that it's a process. It's a very deliberate process of finding. It's like when you're knitting, if you've ever knit before, and you have to, you know, undo something that you did and you made a mistake. Like you've got to find the beginning of the yarn, and then you got to be very careful when you wind it back up and make sure that you don't get a knot in there, that it that it's smooth. You know, it's just like retraining a horse. Let's say you have a horse that, I don't know, was ridden funny and so now it has all these compensatory movement patterns and it doesn't know what normal is, right? The brain fights for these misalignments if, and it always goes back to that, Whoop, right? The movement dynamics that we've created in our soft tissue are kind of like a rubber band, right? At the end of the day, that's why when you're taking a lesson, or let's say you've even taken a um, biomechanics clinic, you know, there's some really amazing um, clinicians now that do like biomechanics clinics where they pretty much pinpoint what your alignment issues are. But that, that just tells you the first step, that tells you that you have a problem. If you have to, every time you get on your horse, you have to think about, oh, my leg is over here. I got to bring it back. I got to bring it back. I got to do this. The brain can only hold so much stuff, right? Like, that's super hard because now your brain, like I said, your whole, the way that your body moves and the way that your soft tissue holds your body has gotten used to a certain way of moving. Okay, so the key is to understand how to reset and retrain all that and include all the pieces. You cannot leave anything out. So I think that's kind of the, the biggest thing that I see really when, um, when I talk to people is, you know, why have they gotten stuck with the same stiffness or same pain for such a long time? A, they're, they're treating a symptom like crazy and you know that never works. But also, even if they find some good things to do, they don't know how to put them all together to make the body whole again. Because at the end of the day, that's what the body wants. It wants harmony. Um, it wants wholeness. Okay. So just because you've had a pain issue, let's say a stiffness or something like that for a very, very long time, it doesn't mean that that's the root cause or that, that it can't go away. Okay. So a lot of times things that we've had for a long time, we think we're stuck with. Like we think it's just how we are, right? I always talk about, um, <laughs> one of my favorite stories is that years and years and years ago, I worked with this, this um, gentleman actually, who his toes were like completely folded under. He was really tall and um, he was in his fifties maybe when we worked together and his toes were like completely folded under. And he said to me, you know, oh, that's never going to change. My mom put shoes on me that were too small when I was a little kid. I've, I've had that all my life. Okay. So I said, okay. Um, and we didn't really like, I mean, I didn't do surgery on his feet, right? Like nothing. But the cool part is that when we made everything else work the way that it's supposed to, all of a sudden his toes just went, oh, and they're released and they were as straight as arrows. Now he'd been walking around with those crooked toes for 50 years, okay, which caused a lot of other compensations and pains and movements and dysfunctions and it was a mess, okay. However, there's this awesome design in how the human body is supposed to work, okay. It's pre-programmed into us. It's this amazing gift that we've been given. Okay, we all have the same movement patterns. There's a blueprint to how we are supposed to move, right? It kind of lives on a scale, like with your spine, like everybody, you know, unless we have deformities, again, that's always, uh, uh, right? We all have an S shape of the spine. Some people have a smaller S shape. Some people have a bigger S shape, okay? That just makes us a little different. That does not make the spine necessarily function differently, okay? Just different shapes of the spine. Other than that, we don't actually deviate in the way that we are supposed to move that much, okay? So um, anyway, I just wanted to come on and talk about this because, I don't know, for some reason that really stuck out 
to me when um, when I read that post about having you know training our horses and expecting more from them you know um, leveling up okay I, I kind of think we should expect more from ourselves because like I said earlier this I think is the most important thing to us as riders and I all I always relate everything to riding because <laughs> this is my one, one track mind and that's what I'm really like this is what I do because yes of course if you have all let's say just the hip you have these crookednesses and all that of course that affects your daily life I mean you know it's painful to sit or stand or you know we give up certain things and we can't sit and all that is also part of the package right but it, it has relevance and it's important if we do it in order to have a better partnership and to be able to have a better relationship with our horses and a you know be able to have more fun because a body that moves easily with the horse and that, that you know you don't have to think about then that's when it's super fun and that's when you can have a moment where your horse like spooks and bucks like <laughs> one of um, our clients said, told the story yesterday of how you know she, her horse was kind of it was windy and he bucked and he did all this stuff and she said oh well, you know he, he bucks so kindly I'm like okay but he was bucking and she's like I knew that oh I can stay on because my body easily responds and I don't have that fear response because I know my body can stick okay so that's what can happen because that's what riding is all about so anyhow um you know like I said if you need help if you feel that you need help or if you kind of had an aha moment right now please let me know um I'm happy to if you want to send me some pictures and you want help figuring out exactly why this is a problem for you and yours also happy to do that um, but most importantly if you if you do want help let me know send me a little private message or you can just um, go ahead and schedule a call with me if you want so hope you're having a good day I will talk to you later